of DVC Clubhouse. Thanks for joining us and tuning in. We've got some friends with us today. As always, is Amy. Hi, Amy. Hey, everyone. And joining us this week is our new friends, Sean and Karen. Why don't you introduce yourselves and tell us where you're from? Hey, everybody. Um, but I just want to start by saying uh, thank you to you guys so much for the, the community. Uh, you know, the DVC Clubhouse has uh, become such a good Facebook group, I think, and uh, it's just overwhelmingly positive and, uh, you know, helpful and uh, fun. So it's just, uh, it's nice to be a part of it and uh, see how, how it's grown so quickly. So, you know, just thank you guys for, for all you do for us. Well, thank you for saying that. That's nice. Live vicariously from time to time, you know. <laughs> <laughs> thank and just you to guys. introduce ourselves, we are Sean and Karen Gallianese. We, uh, we hail from Charlotte, North Carolina. Carolina. Um, I work in uh, the IT world. I do a little app development here and there. And Sean? I'm, uh, I'm an executive chef here in Charlotte, um, primarily Italian food. Um, so, you know, we work a lot and spend our vacation time. In the most We're very place excited that DVC gives us yeah. a family vacation every once yeah. in a while. <laughs> we have uh, two little ones, uh, a seven-year-old and a three-year-old mm -hmm. as well. Two wild little boys who yes. love the mouse. Nice. That's amazing. Yeah. And you said you're an executive chef, Sean? Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So I, work, I run a, a hotel. So, you know, it's a restaurant, an Italian restaurant and a rooftop cocktail bar and tapas restaurant. So yeah. So four cool. restaurants. Yeah, so four restaurants. <laughs> I'm definitely going to have to come see you. Italian's my jam. So yeah, for sure. Um, I'm going to go off script a little bit here because I want to know <laughs> if you're an Italian <laughs> executive chef, Who's got the best Italian food on Disney property? Uh, for, me, for me, so it's Topolino's was uh, just an amazing meal. Um, everything we had there was so good. The bread service, the burrata, um, the, we got the, we got pasta, the tomahawk. Mm -hmm. I mean, they just, it's, it's, I think it's the best restaurant in Disney property. Well, I think it's one of the best restaurants in Disney property. I, haven't, else, I haven't eaten at all the ones I want to eat at yet, so I can't make that, I can't make that call. <laughs> yeah. But it was also our uh, an our wedding anniversary dinner and the first time at Disney World as DVC members. So it was a really special experience oh, on top perfect. of being delicious. Yeah, yeah. top of being delicious. Mm -hmm. yeah, so amazing. it was great. Yeah. And we got to start at the bar and then go to the table. So uh, they Just they, the way we like it. They do. Yeah. <laughs> the way everybody should do it. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, so that's, that's it for me, I think. Perfect, perfect. I have yeah. to agree, actually. So... Why don't you tell us a little bit about your Disney story? Not necessarily DVC, but when did you start going to Disney? Has it been a lifelong thing or recent? Yeah, so uh, for for me, I went, uh, my first Disney trip was when I was seven. We actually did a land and sea trip. So I did the Big Red Boat um, back, which was, you know, back then. Uh, and then Disney. Um, and like, I have very visceral memories of it as a kid, you know. Uh, and it's weird because like, the I, I, I remember the Magic Kingdom the least, and like Epcot and the old MGM studios, uh, like the the most vividly. <laughs> so it's a weird uh, it's a weird experience that way. But I went when I was seven, and then didn't go again until um, twenty twenty one. DVC members, yeah, twenty twenty one. Yeah, I uh, somewhere around twenty nineteen, I started looking twenty eighteen, twenty nineteen, started looking into Disney. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my son was born; he was three. And I was like, oh, you know, like we should go for his fifth for his birthday, right? Like so many families do, uh, thought that would be a good time. And so we started planning it um, and he turned uh, five in July of 2020. Uh, so <laughs> so we weren't able to go. <laughs> uh, you know, we, yeah. we could have gone, but we, you know, we thought like, you know, just the, everything wasn't open yet. It wasn't gonna be the same experience. Right. Um, Karen's never I, been uh, yes. at this point. So uh, my first time at Disney World was as a DVC member and and like he said, we, we really didn't buy in until 2020. And uh, in February of 2020, we had our second. So February 29, 2020, 
I left the hospital and uh, the world shut down. <laughs> um, and then I lost my job. And then my husband keeps talking about buying a contract at DVC. And I'm like, uh, can, maybe we should just talk a minute. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you know what? We ended up, we ended just, up doing it. I, yeah. I had done a lot of research. Um, I'm a, He's a, a rabbit holer. I'm a rabbit holer. Mm -hmm. So I went down a pretty deep <laughs> rabbit hole. And, you know, we'd already paid for a vacation at Caribbean Beach Club. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we got that money back, obviously, because of, of the closure. Um, and then I was just looking at the DVC thing and, you know, being a chef and working so many hours, it's almost like a, uh, a savings account sort of vacation where yeah. it's like, you know what, every year I've paid for a vacation already <laughs> that I own and that I can go to, that I can commit to. And um, honestly, that was the biggest selling point to me too. Just like, oh, we're really just, we're investing in this amazing thing for our family, but it really is just like, Every month we put away money, so we're guaranteed a family vacation. Absolutely, especially after COVID. I'm like, let's Absolutely. do it. Like, what have we got to lose? And I'm so happy we did. I'm so happy. Like, that was a really big leap of faith since I had never even been to Disney World before. Well, did, um, you have, did you guys have friends that were DVC members, or did you just find uh, it through your rabbit holing? I found it through my rabbit yeah. holing. You know, I actually uh, got I got offered a job at Tiffins in 2019 uh, that we I decided you know not to take. Um, and this is when we were living in DC. So now he's also talking. Let's just move to Orlando. <laughs> uh, so I, I we really have, needed a vacation. <laughs> I've always been <laughs> I've always been like fascinated on things on scale, like a really big like a, like a cruise ship. I find fascinating and like just the size of Disney and the food operations of Disney. I found I found really interesting. Um, so yeah, I didn't take the job at Tiffins. We didn't move to Florida. Thank goodness. Uh, Cause I didn't think it opened for two years. <laughs> so I'm really glad that didn't yeah. work out. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I had friends growing up, like my best friend growing up, he, they went to Disney every year, DVC members. And my best friend from college, his family was DVC members. So I knew about it, but really it was mostly through rabbit holing um, and, you know, seeing some, you know, watching some other shows and just being like, well, this financially makes a ton of sense. And there's so much to do there. Um, that kind of pleases, you know, pleases everybody, you know, my, and I think, uh, getting to go, she could, Karen could probably speak to it more, but getting to go by ourselves the first time, mm -hmm. um, just like me and her to see what it was like, um, without, you know, the kids in the parks, we did a, re uh, just a resort stay at Saratoga. So, you know, ate too much at Disney Springs and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, spent too much time in the, the hand, the haddock pool and, um, yeah. Everything you should do on your first trip. <laughs> yeah. Cool. yeah um... That's that's amazing. Sean, you must... Well, first of all, Karen, I feel like you should get like Wife of the Year Award because you let him buy something sight unseen, yeah. having never, ever been there. Like, <laughs> that's crazy to me. Um, yeah. like it, was I said, a, it was a long year of talking about it. <laughs> we desperately needed a vacation. We, Like I said, COVID was a cr crazy for everybody. So you just, you kind of take a moment to put your priorities in order and you just realize how much time you spend at work and how much time you don't see your kids and how much more you love your kids than your job. And it was just, it, you know, at the end of the day, we kind of say COVID was one of those good moments for us. Cause we got to invest in things like DVC sight unseen or otherwise, but um, it, it's been wonderful for us so far. <laughs> That's awesome. And Sean, if, if the executive chef thing doesn't work out, it sounds like you'd get a job as a used car salesman pretty easy. It sounds yeah, like you can sell anything yeah. to anybody. I love it. Sell ketchup popsicles to Eskimos. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. So where do you own? Uh, so we own at Saratoga. Uh, Saratoga. We, got, uh, we bought resale. Mm -hmm. And again, it was one of those things where we bought in October. Um, we ended up not closing until February, but we, we bought it in October of 2020. Um, mm -hmm. so the market was really great and we got it for a hundred dollars a point. And I was like, by the time we closed in February, I think it was 130, 30 or yeah. something like that. Um, so I mean, we're never going to resell it, but it, it's, it's nice to know that it's there. Um, yeah. it's nice to know we did something right. And you know, we've had a lot of luck <laughs> at the seven month, uh, seven month window for getting, you know, other things that we, we want to, other places we want to stay. And, um, so far we've been doing split stays, but we're probably going to cut that out for a little while and just sit in one resort and enjoy it. Maybe. Yeah. I, I just had my first ever non-split stay 
a couple weeks ago and I don't know that I can go back. It was really nice to be able to just like unpack and put stuff in drawers and just right. live there. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So. so we're doing that this year for the first time, No Splits Day. <clears throat> we have a old Key West booked right now in uh, September. Oh, nice. Which I'm excited about. We've only ever passed it on our drive and it's got like that colorful joy. Oh, we went there and uh, drank at the Girdling Suitcase. Oh, that's right. We drank at the Girdling Suitcase. I'm sorry, I forgot. That place is <laughs> so awesome. great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So just out of curiosity, does your September trip overlap our clubhouse weekend? Or do it we does. Make- oh, nice. Yes. Uh, we are, we're going to be there the 21st to the 26th. Uh, so yeah, we're definitely going to awesome. make sure we make one of either, probably either Epcot or the cabin. I'm not totally sure yet. Cool. That's awesome. That's great. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we can't wait to meet you guys in person. I know. Yeah. We're excited. <laughs> so how many places have you stayed so far? Uh, we stayed at um, Copper Creek. Animal Kingdom, Kingdom. Um, Beach Club, Saratoga Springs. Saratoga Springs, and Polynesian. Okay. And frequented the boardwalk, but we've never stayed there. Yeah, we haven't gotten to stay at the boardwalk. Not a lot of luck at the seven months window at the yeah. boardwalk. <laughs> that's our next contract. That's, that's awesome. awesome. Do you do you have a well, favorite I mean, that, yet? Yeah, that's five resorts for having only owned since like really the beginning of 2021, right? Yeah. 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 So we went, um, we went together once. Then we took just our, just our six year old for his birthday. We yeah. surprised him with a trip to Disney world. Yeah. We told him we were taking him to the beach in Florida and instead we showed up and like threw him in the front seat as we were passing the arch that have Minnie and Mickey on it. And he's like, what are we doing? So that was that's, really cool. That's so yeah, great. That cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. I yeah, mean, and so we've been three, you know, three, and then we went together as a whole family with our little one as well. So we've been three or four times, um, but I'm excited to see Old Key. I'm excited to stay at Old Key West. Yeah, we're taking my parents um, with us this time, so they're our babysitter. That, so it's nice to give them something. <laughs> having a 1,400 uh, square foot apartment <laughs> at Disney World uh, <laughs> should be pretty nice. <laughs> yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, as far as favorites go, I mean, we love Animal Kingdom. Yeah. It's, Especially with our kids being able to have the safari and the artwork and, and the, the art, the lobby, yeah, uh, um, the food, the food. It's it's really food great. Yeah, good. I mean, drinking yeah. coffee, seeing giraffes. There's nothing like it. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Sunrise on the savannah is not too bad. <laughs> yeah, for, yeah, for sure. Right. <laughs> Um, do you have, I know you haven't stayed at very many, but is there one that you've stayed at that you didn't really love or would call your least favorite? Uh, it's funny. We actually, I, like people, our least favorite was from service and uh, it's probably Copper Creek. Uh, yeah. Just like. The hotel, I mean, the resort itself, it's wonderful. Great. The pool, wonderful. You know, there were just a few touch points, like customer service touch points, but those can be explained by off days and whatnot. Sure. You know, yeah. I, I wouldn't say that we have a least favorite because no. it was still a wonderful stay, it, it, but that was the moment that it was just different than the rest, I guess. And we love Saratoga. I know a lot of people no, don't, yeah, we, don't love Saratoga, Jeff, uh, but we, we, we like it a lot. Um, you know, we, I thought the, it's peaceful. I think there's part of it does feel like a condo, condo development somewhere in Florida, but it's really nice. It's nice to walk around, being able nice. to be on the river. Uh, walking able, to Disney Springs. Yeah. We always go to Disney Springs when we go down. So just being able to. The walking show of Key West is nice. Yeah, yeah. And let me be clear. I don't hate Saratoga. I, I don't hate it. I just, well, t- to be fair, the only time I've actually ever stayed there was in the tree houses, which was really fun. And my grandbabies loved it. But it was just hard to get anywhere. That was my biggest thing. There was there was no place to eat at the treehouse. Yeah, yeah, I, and I will say, like staying at Beach Club, being when we went to Epcot, just being able to literally like a stone's throw away get there was very convenient. Yeah, Beach Club is yeah. great too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but there is something to be said for the peacefulness at the resorts like Saratoga Springs and Old Key West, where you yeah. feel like you're really kind of like leaving the craziness of the parks and being able to just relax it's like a good combination i think of like a proper vacation and a disney vacation (laughs) yeah yeah and i mean because there are times when you're like if you're staying on a monorail resort there's just always people i mean i'm not that's not a complaint but it's just a reality 
Yeah. And so when you go to Old Key West or Saratoga Springs, there's just like this serenity there that you're like, ah, oh, this is nice. I can. Yeah, it's like yeah. you're, you're, you're oh, unplugging. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Do you guys see yourself using your points not at Disney World? Any of the other? Yeah. For sure. We, we want to do plans, a, yeah. Sure. We want to do mm-hmm. Alani. You know, I think next year we're gonna take uh, Karen's parent, you know, Karen's mom and her husband to to Disney with us. Um, and then after that, we're probably going to cruise for Disney and for the first time. Um, I think it'll be our 10 year anniversary or something like that, right? My, my 40th. Your 40th birthday, which is the same year as our 10 year. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Um, and then Alani after that, you know, we, we really want to see Alani. I mean, the resort looks incredible. Um, who doesn't want yeah. to go to Hawaii? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And just. And just a note to our viewers, if anybody wants to know more about Alani, Jeff and I did a whole um, series on Alani. So you can, um, we can link that in the comments so that you all can check that out um, because it really is a, it, it's a fun, like really special place. Yeah. I mean, the, it looks incredible. And just, you know, I've, uh, I listened, I listened to the, the mad, one of the Imagineers who, helped open it and like he talked you know it was about an hour-long conversation where he talked about the design of it and the interaction with the community and um it was just like so fascinating to hear how they built it and just it's like one of the things i love the most about disney is like i think that resort represents a lot of what i love about disney mm-hmm. you know just how yeah. deep the imagineering went there i actually watched um a before i w- went to visit i was like you know like i always immerse myself in in youtube videos and i found right. one where there was a couple that lives on Oahu and they decided that they were going to visit all of like the different hotels on the Island and rank them. And they ranked Alani very high specifically because of the cultural accuracy that was depicted throughout the resort. And so before I went, I, you know, that was something that was exciting to me because, you know, you go to someplace like the Polynesian and that's kind of like a, like a fairy tale version of what we all have in our heads of what it's like to be in, in a Polynesian Island. But Alani really captured the culture from the decor to the story and the luau. It's really, they did a really good job. Yeah. My favorite, my favorite comparison that Amy ever made about the Polynesian is it's like the Brady Bunch episode where they went to Hawaii, but they didn't actually go to Hawaii. It was like the universal back lot. So it was like right, a yeah. Hollywood version of, of Hawaii. It's, it's the tiki drink version of Hawaii. It's right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's totally the Hollywood version. <laughs> but now uh, with, uh, I'm, I'm pretty intrigued by the cabins too now that uh, they've, they've been announced. Um, this, you know, we don't have a direct contract yet. So just seeing those two, I'm like, uh, I can't, I'm interested to see what the price, the point charts and the prices look like when that all rolls out. Cause um might be a good way to get it inside the the restrictions and have a cool option to to stay with a family and stuff. I'm really yeah. excited about it too, honestly. Like when they announced that, I didn't see that. There was no rumor about that. That was just yeah. like a thing. They're like, "Hey, surprise! Look what we can do!" Yeah. Happy Wednesday. <laughs> and yeah. I almost called Amy immediately because she talked about when we had our old QS show about wanting to have a golf cart to drive around. Right, you know, her DVC resort. That's something that you've always been able to do at Fort Wilderness, whether you're yeah. camping there or staying into those cabins. And I'm like, this is really smart because it sounds like they're bulldozing and just building new ones. Yeah, they're building like yeah, 390 new ones, 370 new ones. And just, yeah, and they look. I like the way they look. I know a lot of people. Uh, you know, I I like they look better than the sort of Lincoln Law, Lincoln Law cabin. Uh, not that I yeah. don't like the way that looks, but I'm okay with a little modernity. Modernity it almost looks like a fancy tiny home. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's what I, I think that's what's so appealing to me is because I've always been kind of intrigued by by tiny homes. Right. I've always mm-hmm. like there there are so many times when I like look on um like Airbnb and you can rent them in different places, but mm-hmm. because I travel to Disney so much, I'm like, nah, that's that's a bucket list. That's a non Disney bucket list for down the road sometime. And then right. they announce those, and I know that it was like kind of divisive that people like some people are like, oh, yes. it's a moderate resort, and I'm like, well, I'm happy. I'd be happy to stay at that. Because I I spent time at Fort Wilderness this past December. I did one of the um, holiday carriage rides through the campground to see like all of the decorations. Yeah. And they gave us a lot of fun facts about Fort Fort Wilderness and the cabins. And and it was that vibe over there was so awesome. It was like 
so it was decorated so nicely for Christmas. They had Christmas carols playing and it, it it just had this like homey, this like real homey feel. And I mean, and I think it's probably the same people who aren't thrilled with Old Key West or Saratoga Springs probably aren't thrilled with this type of resort because it's sprawling. It's a little bit farther. You have to take a bus to most places. Although that boat ride to Magic Kingdom is awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm excited. Hey, about yeah. it too. You got Chippendale. They're going to enhance the, the other two. They're going to enhance trails and in Crockett, So. I think it's, yeah, I know it was pretty divisive, but I don't know, for a direct contract, I'm pretty excited about that as an option. Because, mm-hmm. um, like, you know, we want to, you know, I want to stay at Riviera and all those places, too. And it just clearly is uh, the way that it's going to be is you're going to have to have, have a direct contract to one of the new, new new locations. And that one seems the most intriguing so far. So I'm excited for it. That's awesome. Yeah, I agree. And hoopty doo I still think, is one of the best dinner shows on property anyway. So... Yeah, we actually haven't been yet. This year we're going. I can't wait to go. Yeah, it's so, so fun. It's so fun. Yeah. yeah. Cheesy. Last year our son was still two. So it was just like, I didn't, we just didn't want to deal with a two-year-old there. Um, so, But this year he's three. And he can, he's a bit more mobile and can actually play the instruments when they hand him out at the table versus just <laughs> throw <them away>. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. People are sad that they're closing the, tra- the Trails End buffet, but um, when I was there, we ate at the quick service and it really, there was not a lot of places to sit and eat. So I think that they, it's interesting now it's like in retrospect, when they announced the closure of that restaurant, it's because they knew that they were going to be building these and there was going to be need for a larger quick service place. Right. Yeah. But yeah. I'm, I think that they're leaving that building intact and having those, the porch with the rocking chairs and they have like the little walk up. Um, bar that you can grab a drink and just sit and relax. It's, it's. it's I, I, I think it'll and be. They have awesome, like the so. Disney food trucks there now all the time, and or often they have those food trucks there. Yeah. Or the Disney sponsored one. So I just, I, you know, I've always wanted to stay there, but you know, it's when you have DVC, it's hard to justify uh, sleeping yeah. in a tent. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's so actually I when I get down there. Uh, when I get the relocation, that's one of the videos I want to shoot. I want to go rent an RV for a weekend and do like the actual camping. I'm not yeah. a camper. I, I, I suck at it. So this will be very interesting to see how that pulls Just off. Get, get your copy of Sky Mall, circle your Christmas list, you know. Exactly. You that, yeah. <laughs> those, those, cabin, those cabins the week of Halloween are going to be the hardest thing to get in DVC. So. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. And we'll be the ones clawing for them. Right. <laughs> well, if you get one, we expect an invite. Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> Costumes required. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, so what's on your what's on your DVC bucket list? You mentioned Alani. You mentioned maybe Riviera. Mm-hmm. There's other places you're dying to stay. You're trying to check them all off. Is there other uh, non-DVC things that maybe this has opened up for you? Well, Universal, I mean, down the road, and we're huge Harry Potter yeah, fans, like Harry Potter tattoos. We grew, grew up, with, up the books. with it. He was 11 uh, when I was 11. Like, come on. Yeah. So we got to see his digs, you know. <laughs> as the kids get older, you know, just being able to to utilize the resort to do a universal, you know, universal split stay, too, is huge. Yeah. Um, and then for me, I really want to stay at the Grand. Um, you know, I just feel like it's sort of that old Disney charm and... Um, you know, all the revamping of the food program over the last year and a half, two years. Um, Narcosis looks amazing right now. Uh, yeah, I just, I ate there about two weeks ago, which was like, I think it's like five days after the grand reopening. And it was outstanding. And what they did, because that restaurant, I, I always kind of liked it. And I actually, when I got married in Disney, we had like our family dinner the night before our rehearsal dinner, we did it at Narcosis. Mm-hmm. But the decor just always, it was like so Golden Girls. And they had like a sunken yes. bar. So it's like you're sitting like in your eye level, like, like I don't know, like the the, the bartender is like kind of below you. and But you're, you're sitting and he's standing, but you're eye level. It's like so, yeah. I felt like I was like on the love boat or something. Yeah. <laughs> <And> so <laughs> when I walked in and I saw the, how beautiful, they did such a gorgeous job on the decor. And then the food was just equally as stunning. So I highly yeah. recommend it. The 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 the, it looked, the remodel looked amazing, and I mean mm-hmm. the view if you get it at the right time at night, obviously is like unmatched. So yeah, I love I love getting there when it's still sunny out. So like you get you can see the water, and 
then the sun sets and then you're there to catch the fireworks. Like to me, that's the best of both worlds is that you can get like, cause when you walk in and you see the water, it really adds like an element of just feeling like really beachy and airy and light, but then it gets dark and you can't really see anything until the fireworks start. And like that view is incredible. Yeah. Love it. Is there anywhere you want to stay? <laughs> I I don't want to uh, say something incorrect, but the idea of being able to travel abroad as well and, and you know, like we were, we were huge travelers before DVC. And so the idea that we have an excuse or a place to stay if we go outside of the continental U.S. is really exciting. Yeah, being able to rent the points and being like, you know, hey, we're going to go to Paris this year. Mm-hmm. Or our son is a huge anime nerd, and so we're going to take him to Japan at some point, or we will, ideally. Um, yeah, right. The Just, again, going back to the idea that DVC is kind of like your family vacation bank account, and and it's, it's just giving you the opportunity to go on vacation every year. Now, we always go to Disney World, but being able to go elsewhere is so cool. And the community of people who are ready to buy your earths and buy your points makes it that much easier. You know? yeah. <laughs> well, I think it'll probably evolve as the kids get older and change, and then you know, right? It's... We've got babies, so we want to we want to show them that magic that is Magic Kingdom. Also, we're crazy, and like our first trip to Magic Kingdom, where we're like, we're going to do every roller coaster, and we did every one except Seven Dwarfs, and. <laughs> So So we got that the second time. Yeah. (laughs) But like you said, evolving and as they get older, being able to be more adventurous because of DVC is super cool. Yeah. We've, we've talked about that a lot lately that um, as, as you get older and as your family grows, how flexible DVC can be and how you can change. Like we're moving there. Like right now I've got 375 points and we're moving there and, the ability to have my family come stay, but like not in my living room is really exciting. Right. Yeah, <laughs> or exactly. can... yeah. Or a weekend cabin because yeah. 55 points isn't so bad then. Right. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Or hop over for a weekend getaway as our staycation or renting exactly. those points out and, and hopping on a cruise. It's, it's amazing yeah. what, how flexible. Yeah. And I, made it. I became a DVC member as a newlywed without kids. And so mm-hmm. I have, you know, I became a member, um, just adult only trips is how we started. And then uh, as members, but, uh, but then we had kids. And so like we would, tra- we, the way that we would travel then when our kids were little, um, it totally evolved now, like that my kids are teenagers. And, and then once we felt like we've been doing Disney a lot, then we were, you know, well, let's try out Hilton Head. Let's try out Vero beach. Mm-hmm. And right. so we did those and loved those. And then, I also, I had a trip scheduled to go to Disneyland for the first time in, in April of 2020, which was canceled and used those points to go to Alani, which I, you know, it was, that was kind of, that was the one resort that I was kind of like, when am I actually going to get there? Cause it's like a, it's expensive to fly there. It's a huge yeah. time yeah. commitment. Like halfway right. across the world. Yeah. It kind of like I, if, if COVID had not happened, I don't know if I would have made it out there, but I had these Alaska airline vouchers and where was i gonna go right I'm yeah like, i'm gonna go to hawaii <laughs> so that right. was nice. so it was awesome and i'm so happy that i went because you know it was just also kind of checked off a box for me too of another resort to stay at and right. i've yeah. stayed at them all now but the, at the rate that disney is announcing new resorts i'm gonna have a lot of work to to do to status yeah I, know, I, I have to collect them all. You know, I, I do need. To, we need our pokey badges. We gotta. We gotta collect them all. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. yeah, I've. I've only up until this year. I only had two left to go: Hilton Head and Boulder Ridge. And I was waiting for the refurb at Boulder Ridge before I stayed there. But now, yeah. Disneyland. But I'm gonna have to take out a second mortgage or sell one of my kids to stay there for a night. <laughs> and yeah. These new cabins and Polynesian Tower. I, I can't keep up. I can't keep. I know. Up. <laughs> We're excited for it. Yeah, I'm hoping to do a trip out, like a West Coast trip, and add on one night at Disneyland just to stay at the the tower. Hopefully, I could get a reservation for one night early on before they like sell out. Hope I'm hoping that reservations might be a little easier to get right in the very beginning. Yeah, right. there's still not a ton of West Coast owners, so yeah, 
So yeah, I I I think they did a good job on it. I know like not everyone does, but I think it looks I think it looks really pretty. You know, uh, and it's it's still it's right there. I'm, yeah. I'm, is it? Do I want to stay there more than the Grand Cal? Uh, no. <laughs> 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 but I, I still think they did a pretty good job on it. It looks good. Well, because the reality for me is I didn't want to stay at the Disneyland Hotel more than I wanted to stay at the Grand Cal. So the fact right. that there is exactly. like a, a this DVC tower, I want to stay there once. But if I'm to, to your point, if I'm going to stay at one of them, I want to stay at Grand Cal. But I do. Yeah. I think that you know, if you look at the picture of the Disneyland Tower, kind of in isolation, you're kind of like, hmm, it just looks like a hotel. But when you look at it in relation to the Disneyland hotel and like the pool with the monorail, like it, it makes sense. And look, those splashes of color make sense. And it's yeah. like, I, th I think that they did a pretty decent job. I just don't love the the logo. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> well, and see, I'm in the minority. I actually, I don't want to say I prefer the Disneyland hotel over the Grand Cal, but the Disneyland hotel is special. There, there's a nostalgia to that hotel. And it looks the way it does because that's the way it's always looked, you know, well, not always, they did a, a huge renovation, but you know, you walk in and e each tower is themed to a different land at Disneyland. So you've got the Fantasyland tower and the Frontierland tower, and each of them have their own pictures and their own kind of vibe. And I don't know. I, I think the Disneyland hotel is special. I just, I'm cheap. And so when I go to Disneyland, I stay across the street at the stop oh, and run. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> because no, they're no, actually closer than the Disneyland Hotel is. But I, I think there's something about walking into any Disneyland or any any Disney hotel or resort and just accepting it for what it is and and getting a lot of joy out of that. It's like whether it's your favorite or your least favorite, I think if you just walk in like not thinking about maybe criticisms you've heard or, or it, you know, compliments you've heard and just kind of taking it in and learning all those like little tidbits that Disney is so good at sneaking into their designs. It's more, I like to think of it like a treasure hunt. Like how is this different than what I've seen and how is this special for where we are? And, and to your point, like nostalgia is a big thing. We're geriatric millennials what do they say like we love nostalgia we crave the 90s yeah. so yeah. i i could totally appreciate that point <laughs> yeah being being six or seven eight nine ten during like the disney renaissance with lion king and little mermaid i mean oh you my know, god disney's aladdin such a big blew your, my mind so uh, disney's yeah such a big part of your childhood <laughs> yeah. it makes, it makes an imprint right <laughs> and, I, and i always say my favorite resort is whichever one i'm currently staying at so right <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah when i'm planning i might have an order of priority but once i'm there it is what it is and i am 100 percent happy to be wherever it is i end up yeah the bed is always softer than ours at home you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> somehow well, and i've said for years you know you talk about the 90s I've said for years they need to do something, whether it's a land or a hotel yeah. or something. But I want my Chippendale Rescue Rangers. I want my tailspin. Yes. I want my Darkwing Duck. I, know. <laughs> I oh want my that goodness. itchy neon, gross. Our kids' logos. favorite show right now is Ducktales. Duck yes. Oh, it's I know best. it's the coolest thing. Yeah. And yeah, Oliver's really into Darkwing Duck, and uh, we watch. I mean, I watched the new Chip and Dale movie because of the nostalgia. All it was so good. Like it was so good. It was so good. Oh, it was perfect. And uh, our three-year-old loves the old Chippendales. He loves Chippendale. Yeah. yeah. And he likes the new ones too, but I don't like them quite as he's much. The, life he's the like stuff. the hit your head on a hammer kind of humor anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so it's perfect for him. But yeah, my, uh, yeah, we need a 90s resort. My photos of me at Disney when I was seven, I'm rocking my Darkwing Duck fanny pack the whole time. <laughs> Every yeah. picture I got big Darkwing Duck fanny pack. Your mom has to have that somewhere, right? Oh, yeah. I found it on eBay. <laughs> That's, they, they really need to take Pop Century to that kind of level where each building that's yeah. supposed to be the 90s gets an actual like Disney. Like, like they, video, yeah. Seriously, the 90s building should have Clear Coke or what was that? No, Clear Pepsi. Yeah, Clear Pepsi. Pepsi. Oh, yeah, Clear Pepsi. Yeah. Yeah. You have to use dial up internet. No, I'm just kidding. We won't do that. <laughs> it's only Prodigy. Yeah. yeah. Prodigy internet. That's it. <laughs> you check in, you get your CD with AOL minutes. Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> I was joking um, that they should create a 70s themed resort because it would be like, you know, so atrociously ugly that it would be amazing. Yeah. yeah. Hey, the 70s be, are back, you know? <laughs> yeah. And people would just be sitting in the lobby smoking and ignoring their children. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, no rules. You don't have to babysit them. It's all, it's all corded phones and cigarettes. Yeah. 
Tom Collins. Right. <laughs> yeah. totally. Disney's always been good at creating worlds where you'd cut off from the rest of the world. Can you imagine our kids trying to function in an 80s theme? Like if you actually yeah. had to use the phone. Yeah, exactly. Can't even what should imagine. we do? I don't know. Just go throw that bike off that bridge. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, like an escape it. room. Yeah. <laughs> We'd have an 80s themed escape room where the teenagers have to use dial up internet and, and corded phones with the rotary oh, yeah. and, and a map. And a map. <laughs> yeah, map quest. Map. Yeah, exactly. Not even an actual paper. Yeah, map quest. <laughs> Printed out map quest directions. That's how I got to and from college uh, every summer. Yep. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, we always talk about our, our highlight reels, you know, the stuff that makes the Instagram and, and the social media posts. We don't ever talk about our Disney fails, like the, the things that went right in the dirt. Is there a story that you guys have that didn't really make your highlight reel? Uh, well, you know, going to Disney with a two year old is always interesting. So there and, are, there um, were, there were some moments we, we did real, I will say we did very good with Genie Plus. Uh, we yep. really, you know, I sort of, uh, stacked them all for the the afternoon, you know, just sandbagged all of the rides at Magic Kingdom for the afternoon. And we kind of uh, went in and did like a bunch of like, we did like Dumbo first and the Little Mermaid. And we we're like trying to ease them into the idea of what a line is. And so we didn't run into any lines until like our fourth ride, which was Winnie, Winnie the, the Pooh. Pooh. Um, and it was, it was only a 30 minute line. So really wasn't that pretty reasonable. And that was our longest way to the vacation, but not for our two year old. <laughs> and especially because, uh, the, the strollers, we couldn't bring the strollers into the actual queue itself. Plus it's a great queue. I mean, there's stuff for him to play with. The only problem is you have to then move him from one activity to the next. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So and, that was a bit of a meltdown in the Winnie the Pooh ride. And he's, he's <laughs> a, he's a COVID kid. So he, he's never been alone ever. And, and, uh, so if like Sean would go off with our older one on a roller coaster and I was going to do the, the parent pass after him the entire time, just meltdown because we weren't all four of us together forever. Mm -hmm. All of the time was happening, (laughs) you know, uh, but honestly, that was but, it. Yeah, but it. Yeah, we we have a lot of highlights. We've gotten very lucky, you know. We, and mm-hmm. the the guest services that we've, you know, I mean, one issue with a bellboy, but other than that, the guest services we've experienced at mm-hmm. the hotels have been amazing. Uh, you know, we left, we accidentally left our son's blankie in the Polynesian on one of our split stays. And he, is, to preface, has uh, never. That's the fifth member of the family. He d- won't even go to the grocery store without him today. We went to the grocery store and forgot his blanket, which he calls Ricky because he couldn't pronounce Blanky when he was little. Aww. So he, he yeah. called it Ricky. So Ricky, we forgot yeah. the grocery store today and he had a meltdown. So, so a year and a half ago. The staff of the Polynesian was so good. They like got to housekeeping mm-hmm. before it got to lost and found. And, um, you know, I mean, we realized it pretty quick because we got to the next hotel and it was nap time and there was no Ricky, which meant there was no nap time. Uh, so and no so, more vacation until we found it sped back to the polynesian in a panic and uh the front desk people were amazing and they got with housekeeping mm-hmm. and got us the next morning by eight o'clock in the morning they called and found the blanket and it's like thank god that's so great they they're pretty good about that i mean i've had some stuff never get found again but one of the most important things ever was our my girlfriend's daughter was five six seven, i don't know she was young um, and had this stuffed dog that she took everywhere and we had left it at Coronado Springs, went home and didn't realize it till we unpacked. And it was like you said, fifth member of the family, like she lost it. And it was this yeah. like <laughs> dog beanie baby that they don't make anymore that my girlfriend went online and like bought a fake one just in case they yeah. couldn't find it. And we were going to like <laughs> run it over with the car a few times to make it look like it was <laughs> <laughs> 10 days later. 10 days later, the dog showed up in the mail. <laughs> they found it and mailed it to us and all, yeah, all was right with the world are, again. They are pretty good. I, I find it's amazing. But but also to your point about the, uh, the meltdowns, that's also something about being a DVC member that I have found like throughout my membership is because you know you're going back and because you're also like just so familiar with things because you visit so frequently, I feel like you minimize the number of meltdowns because you can kind of yeah. say like, okay, well, well, if we don't get to it this time, we'll do it next time versus a family who comes 
spends, you know, ten to fifteen thousand dollars on a vacation yeah. and is like, we are going to ride every single ride. I don't care if you just stubbed your toe and it's hanging off of your body. Like yeah. we're gonna get on this thing, you know? This is happening. and yeah. yeah, I could not agree with that point more. And especially as I will speak to all the moms who go on vacation, like I as a person am a ball of stress. Um and generally, like in my day to day, I can use it to my advantage. But on things like vacation with your kids, wanting to get the most and making those family moments, it becomes a job. And like, then then you don't get a vacation, and then it becomes those kind of feelings. And like, because of DVC, I'm able to go on my on vacation and and do that. Just make the most of the moments that we are having and not worry about the ones that we missed. Yeah. We always take a break in the middle of the day. Yeah. We're at a park. We go back to the resort and have lunch and swim Downtime, in the quiet pool and try right. to take a nap. And, yeah. um, you know, fortunately I'm a rabbit hole very hard. And so I Disney plus very aggressively. And so it's like, <laughs> what does it even matter? We'll, we'll take a five hour break. It's going to be fine. We're still going to go on all these rides. It's all going to be okay. Like, yeah. And that, I mean, you know, I don't, and- I don't love paying for it, but in, in that it's so worth the money for that reason too. Like you can really plan the day and just, you know, if we, like this, you know, we go to magic King this year. I'm going to leave and go to steakhouse 71 for lunch. And then mm-hmm. I'm going to go back to the resort and go swimming. And, um, you know, it's just a nice relaxing way where you don't have to feel stressed out or push your kids Harder too than, hard yeah because yeah, they're just kids you it's know hot. Our, it's hot our three-year-old is only <laughs> three three he yeah. was only two when we went like how, how much can you expect of a two-year-old really and you can buy all the portable fans and all the <laughs> cheshire tails and all the you know whatever you want but a two-year-old's gonna be two the two two gonna be two in and, yeah. and <laughs> And so it's, it's well, been mean, really, even nice. Jeff, he texted me after his, his last trip where he, just, where they were just there a couple weeks ago. And he wrote that he was like dead after like the first day, he's like, I'm getting too yeah. old for this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so, just, just, we, we let our friends that don't get to go very often be in charge of our first day. And we'd met them at Epcot mm-hmm. and they had the disability pass that they added us to. And so they got to, make those lightning lane requests but yeah. my god it was soren to remy to test track and then back yeah. for lunch at chef's different like i have never walked epcot in that way i doubled I every other trip like i was done <laughs> i was like yeah. 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 We, we ran into that when we got our lightning lanes at epcot this year where it was like because of guard because of guardians and getting guardians it just happened to be uh and then the, the, the just the way it worked out it was like we ended up doing the guardian side during the day but we had our guardians pass for at night. So then we're back to world showcase. It was a lot of, it was nuts. Yeah. Yeah. And and because of just the amount of non shade there is like the kids are like, I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. And it's like, me too. But it was funny. We left, we left (laughs) early and we went to uh, um, art of animation and walked around art of animation and Mm -hmm. got a a whole pizza from the, the Mm -hmm. quick service there. And then we watched the fireworks from the skyliner. Um, So it was like, you know what? We're pretty burnt out. I don't feel like hanging. We do like the same thing. DVC, like we'll be back. But even uh, the fireworks like, show at Epcot that year wasn't all that great anyway. I don't really want to see the barges. I um, remember, like, even while we're watching those fireworks from the Skyliner, I'm like, you know what? This is still a magical moment. We are literally flying through the sky watching the fireworks. This is super cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I love that. I, I tell you what, that food court art of animation is so underrated. I think it's the yeah. best food court. Like even their pasta. I know you're a chef, but I'm like for fast food pasta. I'm like, I'm eating this. It's good. Yeah. yeah. The pizza to me, I, I think it's the best deal on property. And like, you know, cause there's, there's like, you know, the three or four good pieces of pizza that you can get in Disney and then there's everything else. Uh, so if you're going to have every, any one of the, anything else anyway, like why not have a whole pie for like what you pay for a whole pie anywhere? Yeah. Um, yeah and it really was pretty good. I was like, yeah, this is not bad. Terrifying there at breakfast, though. Like in the morning when people are getting their coffee and their breakfast before the parks, it is terrifying. Oh, I've told the story weird. before. It was the day that I met Jeff for the first time and he was picking me. I I flew in late, so I stayed there like literally for five hours because my flight was delayed. I didn't get there till 3 a.m. He was picking me up at 8. <laughs> so I walked over to get coffee and I was like <laughs> way too tired for this. And like people like navigating double wide strollers, like coming at me. Yeah. I was like, it it is the Hunger Games in the morning. It's, it's yeah, it, right. It's filled with the kindergartners from recess. 
It's yeah. Just, yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's very dangerous. That's amazing. But we love, walking around that resort was great too. We just walking around Cars Land and taking pictures at night like that. Oh, and our kids love, love cars. So love that, yeah, so. being able to see that was awesome. Well, that's why you have to love Disney too, because they bring the vacation. Like you don't just leave the parks and then you're staying at like some random hotel that's just a room and a rectangular right. pool. You are you stay immersed wherever you yeah. go. And so and you're and especially when you have little kids, they don't know the difference between Magic Kingdom and being seeing the cars at, at Art of Animation. That's just all huge and exciting for them. And right. so yeah. it's like you can just you can have those those you know, that downtime while still feeling like you're to your point, like having a magical moment. Yeah. And having the, and, oh, the boardwalk performers back and everything was so amazing yeah. this year. Just the boardwalk at night, like just it was it's so funny, like how you're like the vacation transitions when you're a DVC member, because you don't have to be. So we go to parks, we go to two or three parks in a week versus cramming in all four, mm -hmm. um, you know, so there means there's four or five days where you're just enjoying the resorts and seeing all the things are, there is to see that's, you know, outside of just the, the parks, but you're still in the bubble. So it's great. Yeah. And I mean, I'm super spoiled. I've never been to Disney World before DVC. And so I've only stayed at Disney Resorts. <laughs> but before then, I'm like, you know, in my in my very Dutch Midwestern mind, I'm like, how much more special can that money make it, you know, or, or how much more special could a resort on Disney property actually be? But you get to it and it, you know, I can't even talk about like, all of the nerdy little details, which I could because I love, but it's something beyond that. It's just this like feeling, this atmosphere that's created and, and the magic that we all talk about that is so special to being a DVC member, you know, getting my butt in, my first Disney trip button and <laughs> all that, you know, I, I know all the kids get them, but like, those those kind of things and just being made to feel so special throughout your stay from cast members and and uh, um, and those just little details that you don't even realize you're seeing is is worth all the money we've spent. I think for yeah, me, for sure. Yeah, maybe that's my theater kid background. Just loving it. No, <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't agree more. I, I they. There's a reason we keep going back. And I've been going to Disneyland right. since I was three, you know, so 40 years, yeah. basically. And I've never gotten tired of it. So Yeah. And I'm, I got to speak to to the DVC community as well. Like, you know, there, I, there's always going to be Bob and Betty Downer who have always have something to complain about. But for the most part, like c communicating with DVC people, like meeting you guys and being able to be here and just talk about why we love it and how much I see my husband rabbit hole and how it's like the cutest thing ever. <laughs> this is like, you know, grown man, just I wonder what Mickey Mouse is up to today. <laughs> it's exactly. it's um, <laughs> adorable. <laughs> and um, it's just something special to be part of this group of people who are looking for the same thing as us, just a retreat for ourselves, for our family to kind of get away from the like mandatory grind that we all feel. And that just only gets harder and harder, um, especially with little kids. It feels like it's just ongoing, but to be able to take your whole family away from that and, to be together and to just have magical moments together that you can't always explain. It's, it, I don't know. It's so worth it. It makes it, makes it worth it all. I, I love the DVC community and that they're able to share in that joy together with me, you know? I couldn't agree more. You know that you, you hit it right on the head. And I feel like Sean and I would are kindred spirits that before I even start my work day, I'm on the internet seeing what Disney stuff's been going on since exactly. I fell asleep eight yeah. hours before, <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but and to your point, that's kind of why Amy and I started this is we wanted to build the community aspect of this and, and get people actually connected with one another, like yeah. in the parks or, or at our meetups or whatever this ends up growing into. We still don't know. We're still figuring it out, but. Yeah, yeah, like I, I, I just wonder, like, how, 
how many people and how many different backgrounds are all part of this community and, and that what we share is that we love ourselves and our family enough to do this. Yep. <laughs> and I, I think that's something that we don't see very often these days and, and I love it and respect it. And it's yeah, a breath of fresh air. It is. I'm really happy to be a part of it. Well, it's like we've said on, on other episodes, who would have thought that buying a fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollar timeshare would have created such friendships, but I have, I've met people that are very dear to me now and, and hope to meet so many more, you know, so it's, it's a pretty special place. Was there anything else you wanted to add before we wrap up or Amy, did you want to chime in at all? No, just again, just to say thank you guys so much for taking your time out of your, your weekend to, to spend with us. It's I'm, I'm with you. The community is so awesome. I love talking about this. I can't, my, I can't do it with my family members. They have their tolerance. They, I mean, and I give them a ton of credit because they listen, they'll listen, but they don't listen. Right. right. I mean, like, <laughs> like we don't, we, I can't do this for an hour with some, with a member of my family. So thank you for, <laughs> for being here to, to, you know, indulge me and Jeff as well, because it's what we love to do too. And thank you for having us. I mean, we can't make, wait to meet you guys and some of the other people in person. Mm-hmm. And- you know, in 151 days or whatever it is. <laughs> Not that I look at the ticket. We've got, we've got the, we've got the blocks. We changed the time, the days on the blocks. <laughs> That's awesome. We should actually have a countdown up on our, on our group. That's a good idea. We should. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, again, thanks you guys for joining us and, and spending time with us. We, we look forward to meeting you as well. Um, and to the rest of the group, don't forget to subscribe and like, and go check out TikTok. Amy's been killing it over there. It's amazing. I I go way down the TikTok rabbit hole, Sean. Like it's scary it's, how much it's time goes by. It's worse. And I'll that's, I'll have this cute video show up about Disney or DVC. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. And it's ours. I had no idea. Amy's just actually, <laughs> actually killing it. So I love that. But, um yeah, thanks everybody else for, for tuning in and, and we'll DVC you real soon. Bye everyone.